come in so far. It'd be pretty. I'm just not sure. Let's see if I take this out. There we go. <clears throat> I can make it a little bit smaller. Bring this wing out a little more. Yeah. Oh, sorry about cutting out. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm pretty happy with this piece so far. I know we're not very far enough along, but so far I like it. I ought to save. Let me see. Fairy tale. Save. So if you're listening in, uh, what is your favorite fairy tale? or fable or story that you were told at bedtime. Do you have one? I know some people don't and others do, but You'd have to think about it. <laughs> I understand. It's a tough choice for me. I think I'd have to think about it too. I do remember my mother would tell us the uh, tale of St. Nicholas. Not Santa Claus, but Saint Nicholas, like the actual story, and I really liked uh, I really liked that one. Oh, thank you, Mint Poppy. I'm loving it too. <laughs> I really like being able to show like the the breath of the wings and stuff. I gotta figure out do I want my ears forward or back? I always feel like back looks nice. And forward looks like uh I don't know, they're like confident and paying attention. <laughs> Well, tell V, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mint Poppy. I quite like elegant designs. I'm more partial to elegance than I am to, like, chaos and stuff like that. Like, I think they're really cool regardless. But uh, if I had to choose, like, for personal, personal preference, I was, like, the elegant, pretty, prim, proper... <laughs> You know. Oh, Hansel and Gretel and Red Yes, Red Riding Hood is amazing. Oh, thank you. I love doing them. They're a lot of fun and they're a great challenge. The chaos designs. But uh like when it comes to my own personal characters, I much prefer the like simple, pretty that kind of stuff. <laughs> I feel like his eye is just a little bit. There we go.
That is one thing I love about digital art is I can just like drag and drop and manipulate anything where I need it to be. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. But when I do traditional art, ah, you gotta erase. There's no control Z. It's like, man. <laughs> Ivy. I'm glad you were able to sneak on. <laughs> I don't know if I want to add little forearms poking out or not. Let's see. I feel it always looks a little more complete when I do add legs to the front, even if you can only partially see them. Ooh, Rip Man Winkle. There's a book I used to read it as a kid. My grandma had a, all the classic fairy tale stories. That's awesome. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of uh, the book I have from my aunt. I have like so many fond memories reading it and smelling it. <laughs> Where does that sound? <laughs> Hmm. I don't think that looks terrible. There we go. Yes. There's something special about the smell of a new book or an old book or just any, any book. <laughs> I know my, uh, my grandma, when I was growing up, she had this big set of encyclopedias and it was really cool because the encyclopedias included photos of like all of the different topics that they were talking about so I would like flip to like the animals and like falconry sections and everything and just read and read and read over and over again and uh, those books had a very peculiar smell that uh, I don't, it was it was an amazing smell <laughs> and I just love the those super old books Probably wasn't the best for, you know, your body physically to sniff, but <laughs> there's something about those old books that's, uh, that's pretty special.
you know, after drawing, what, well over a thousand designs, you would think I'd get the hang of back legs. And I still have trouble with them. <laughs> and that's okay. We all have our vices. And uh, back legs is one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You don't notice any cons inconsistencies. It's not looking bad, I don't think. Yeah, look at that. That ain't bad. Mint Poppy Wow, 1,000 plus. Yeah. Yeah, there, uh, there's a lot of them. A lot of it's uh, also due to, like, the litters and the sets where I've been able to, like, replicate um, the original bases that I've made. But uh, there's also a lot of, uh, <laughs> just a lot of designs overall. A lot of single auctions. But I've been at this, gosh... For several years now. I think the first Cool Dogs came out in like 2014, 2015, maybe earlier. I'd have to look at our uh, master list. But yeah, we're coming up on a decade, which is super impressive. Like, it's amazing to be uh, still making them to this day. I feel, you know, very, uh, very humbled and very lucky to have people that support this community and support this style of art and yeah it's just awesome As soon as it's 2016 on the master list. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a little sooner than that. I have to look though. But yeah, I remember drawing designs before ever starting uh, Cool Dogs. I remember like winning a contest for points and stuff with a design, and uh, I kind of got hooked. It's like, man, this is fun. I like this. Let's do this again. Let's make another design. See what we can do. <laughs> I just love creativity. It's a lot of fun. I like interpreting stuff. I like being given like a mood board or given just verbal details and hey, draw this, include this, and inspiration from this. I'm like, okay, yes, let's go. <laughs> I just love it. It's, it's a lot of fun.
and something I'm really hoping to try uh, next week, which was the, it was uh, suggested by one of our community members named Left, and uh, they want me to like follow a Bob Ross art tutorial, but I want to follow it like digitally and see what happens. And then I'd like to be able to like base a design and like fit a design into that environment. So I think that'd be really cool. Oh, it's two, okay. It is 2013. Wow. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> that means next year's our like 10 year anniversary or no, this year's our 10 year anniversary. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Luna, you can't hear anything. I will type to you. Oh, you have a very old one. That's understandable. I know some people have been asking for like that older art style. And uh, I don't know if I can replicate it. Like it's been so long. Like I could try. I know I've had requests for like more designs with the... Uh, like the mains and stuff. And I could probably get by doing that. <laughs> oh, you're one of those? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I do like that older art style. I just gotta remember like actually how I did it. Like it's been so long. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, uh Like I'm so, I'm so used to my current uh, ways of designing. I think it'd be fairly tough to go back to to that, but maybe that'll be like another challenge I could do. Like recreate an old style design. That could be really fun. <laughs> yes, um oh that bluish design you sent me. I can't think of the name. But I love that um, first style. And I miss doing that first style. But it would probably require me to really practice to be able to <laughs> to pick it up again. Like that specific first style. But Ooh, a Cool Dog Classic. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I might actually, uh, I might actually do that in the next few weeks. We'll see. I think that could be a lot of fun. Yes, Farron. That's it. I, I knew it had a double R. I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. I'm terrible with names and I'm terrible with character names too. So I apologize. Yes, the turquoisey one. <laughs> like I'm actually really terrible with names like even in real life it's like ah this person just told me their name why can I not remember it <laughs> it's like I try it's just my brain's like ah you don't need that for now. You'll be fine. <laughs> Although, gang, I do know your name because ours are so similar to each other. Now. <laughs> now I remember it. But, uh, other than that, like, it's really bad, like, when I get, like, an email or an invoice from, or not an invoice, but I get a payment from somebody through PayPal, and it's like, I recognize this is one of my, you know, regular people's names. <laughs> I just got to figure out who is who. And I'm, I'm slowly, I'm slowly starting to get it, but... <laughs> I'm really thinking of, like, extending this canvas and really just letting her, uh her tail flight because I have an idea with her tail that I want to try and you know you can never have too long of a tail right 
So let's just like, yeah, let's make it flow. <laughs> And this is gonna look a little weird for a, for a little bit here, but if if I can get it right, it'll all come together. <laughs> the goldfish brain in all my art classes. <laughs> Now, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be a challenge. How well can I write in a flowing tale? Yes, Yang, we love you. <laughs> I feel so bad too like uh, when someone tells me details or something like I forget and uh, I don't mean to do it so I can sympathize with you in a way
like uh, someone will like ask for a uh, commission estimate, which is totally fine. Like I love, you know, answering those types of inquiries. But then like three months down the road, they'll be like, I want the commission that I asked about. I'll be like, I don't remember. <laughs> like I'll have to go back and look. But, and then it'll like ring a bell once I see it. Or like even if they send a request like the week prior. <laughs> You're so toast right now. Do you like the once upon a time like a uh, piece of parchment in the tail? Like I said, I wanted to try some new things with this design, so I'm just kind of just kind of going all out. Let's see what happens. Even if it turns out weird, who cares? <laughs> well, the goal is fairy tale. So, I'm hoping we can <laughs> we can achieve that. And I also feel like fairy tale is kind of subjective. Like some people think it's like strictly like historical fairy tales. Some people think it's just like bedtime story. You know, some people think fables are, are thrown into that. So I'm just kind of interpreting, interpreting it as I go and kind of as I please. <laughs> Some wrinkles in our old paper here. A good worn fairy tale page. <laughs> fairy tale, yes. Snow White soundtrack in the studio. Yeah, like a lot of the Disney ones come to mind, like Cinderella, Snow White, and that kind of stuff. And Shrek, <laughs> the ultimate fairy tale. Every uh, every fairy tale must have donkey, dragon hybrid babies. The true litmus test for for a fairy tale. I think this is looking pretty cool. Oh no, the only thing I <laughs> I'm stuck in this orientation, <laughs> or else I have a backwards a backwards uh once upon a time. That's okay. <laughs> and tomorrow I've got a lot of uh, your character here's I'll be working on like a ton I got like nine that are paid for to do <laughs> so it'll be a busy day tomorrow but I don't mind it there's a lot of really cool designs lined up I'm so excited what's cool is like those uh your character here is like you can have such different like vastly different designs and they can still work in the same spot and with the same background but in different ways I just think it's so cool yes here's in there I'm excited
<laughs> Yang and V, they both also have your character here is lined up. Yes, I can't wait. I have somebody in mind, but I'll uh, ultimately decide tomorrow. Yang gave me two different designs to choose from, so I get to surprise them for their uh, your character here. Which I love. I love when people let me let me choose and surprise them. Either one would look gorgeous, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's super fun. Look at that long tail. I love it. You know, she probably gets a lot of leaves and clutter in it, but she pretty. And that's okay. <laughs> She's like uh, like Rapunzel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on shading this V. Yes. That's something I love with the your character here is, is uh how vastly different a design can be and then like it still fits. Like you can have like a beautiful pure white, you know, sparkly glowing dog and then you can have like a super dark like villainous looking thing and like they'll both fit <laughs> in their own way <laughs> hi Luna oh I, got, I ought to save shouldn't I oops And I've been debating if I want to keep this uh, just pure traditional quill dog super deity or if we want to go hybrid. I'm not sure yet. Because um, if I recall, Fable and Legend and some of the other um, super deities from that time, they're all... Uh, just quill dog so it would be more fitting with the role but we also have other options you like the hybrid idea <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard decision. Like, I'm trying to think to, like, f to me, fairy tales is, like, synonymous with, like, some celestial stuff. So, like, I could see a Jackaluna or Jackalastrala um, hybrid working. I think that would be really cool. I don't have in mind to do a faux fox hybrid today. Um, I didn't make an orb in the tail anyway, <laughs> but there's still options. Yes, 
I'm I'm torn in the same way, Luna. Like I love the simplicity of a cool dog, and I love that it's more in line with the the other super deities of this style, like you know Fable and uh, Legend. But it is also nice to have a good old hybrid every once in a while, or most of the time. Like, I'm kind of leaning towards just keeping it pure cool dog, I'll be honest. Ooh, Tribet is cool, though, too. Hmm. Decisions. <laughs> this is the hard part of designing. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the, the pure cool dog this time. We ought to give pure cool dogs a little more love. And then maybe next week when I do the, uh, the Facebook inspiration design, I think that'll lend itself a lot more towards a, a hybrid or a tribrid. I think that'll be, that'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you love the design. If they become like a trio with lore and legend, that would be really cool. Yeah. Like my intent, like there's not like an official like, oh, they're this super special trio. But I kind of had in mind that they were more in line with some of the older, older uh, super deities. Or in that same kind of vein. <laughs> yeah like I was saying earlier my uh my loose inspiration for this one like just beyond fairy tale was the thought of uh mother goose so I'm thinking like a lighter base big beautiful goose wings <laughs> stuff like that so I think it'll I think it'll be more of like a whimsical, whimsical fun design. Honk. <laughs> I might, I don't know yet, I might, there's, I've, I've had an idea, and I don't know if I want to execute it or not, but I was thinking, like, the quills 
because they're going to hang so high and there's going to be all this space, you know, before it reaches the tail. It could be a really cool way to like introduce little uh, throwbacks to different fairy tales. Like maybe one can have like a little piece of red fabric from Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. Or a poison apple on one of them. But I don't want to make the design too, too busy either. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to do that or not. We'll see. I also want to make a design someday down the road. Not sure when, but I want to make one that's uh, kind of based off of all of the birthstones together. So there'd be uh, 12 different gemstones involved in the design. I think that'd be really cool. I'd imagine some type of like kitsune with uh, multiple tails. Maybe a stone in each tail or something like that. I think it'd be really cool. <laughs> what did Missy say? I can't hear. <laughs> Hide your bank account. <laughs> It's a secret V, a secret the world will never know. <laughs> or, you know, if you like watch this back on YouTube, you'll know. Honestly, I don't know which part you're referring to, but uh, I'm happy to repeat. <laughs> what colors? Oh, I'm, I'm hoping I don't know if she can hear this, but I'm hoping to do like a lighter base based on like a big white goose, maybe off white goose. We'll see. <laughs> I could make them all bino. No. <laughs> because I love you. Because I based a design off goose. Yeah, it'll either be white or off-white or like some form of cream. Like when I think goose, I think like a light cream. That's just the idea though. I may have it do like a gradient yet. I don't know. I just gotta wait and see. Yeah, I'm the same way, Luna. Like a soft beige or cream color. Like just a good country goose. <laughs> v is invading your DMs. Oh no. V, it might be white. It might be like beige. I think like manila envelope. <laughs> Not manila envelope, but like those, uh, I don't know, like creamy colored... like skin tone type of I don't know <laughs> Rosie stop scratching here stop 
This dog, I love her to death, but she gets in like these neurotic spells where she just scratches and scratches and scratches herself. <sighs> You're all right. You don't gotta scratch yourself for forever. <laughs> yes, like the pages of old books. Like where they have a soft tinge of weathering. They're not quite white anymore. But they're still a nice warm color. Or like a tinge of warmth anyway. That's what I envision. Yeah. <laughs> I also think I uh, I really like the ratio I've done this week between commissions and projects. And I feel like like next week if I can do two to three days of commissions and then around two days of project work I think that works out I think it's a nice it's a nice balance yes cuddle up with a good book warm blanket rain outside hot tea on the stove yes love it <laughs> Like thunderstorm rolling in. The day is kind of overcast and cool, and the house is like dimly lit. And you have a candle, so nice. <laughs> and it's just you and your book. CS soft classical music. Oh, I've never been to Southern California. On our honeymoon, we went last year in November. We went to uh, like Arizona, New Mexico. So that's like the furthest west I've ever been. But uh, I've never been to Southern California. Yes, Codex. Lucky that is like one of the designs that vaguely reminds me of what we're talking about. Like that. That design hit the nail on the head. I love doing that design, by the way. He's so cool. Yeah, like the parchment, the parchment feel, that kind of thing. Yep. Old manuscript. Though I wouldn't say this one is nearly as old. <laughs> this is more just like old book feel hmm there's a woodpecker outside picking on the house I can hear him
this is the part that usually takes the longest is uh filling in all the the fur texture <laughs> Apple bottom jeans, Mishy doing fur. <laughs> oh my goodness. Next thing you know, auction got posted. <laughs> That's kind of perfect, Luna. Like now I have that song in my head. <laughs> and everybody bids. <laughs> oh Lord. I hope to uh, put this out today. That's my intent when I'm done with the stream. And uh, I'm hoping to post it for up to like a whole day. But there will also be a uh, auto buy option. I don't know how much yet. Really depends on uh, how much crazy detail I put into this. <laughs> we'll see. But uh, next week, I am hoping to do a trial run with some of the uh, suggestions we got last week for shorter um, snipe guard times. So I'm wanting to do something where there's a snipe guard time of like 10 minutes. But uh, I figure I'll do that next week. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's in my head for for life. But yeah, this guy's going to be one day auction with a uh, option to auto buy. And for anybody watching that may not see my artwork uh, progress very, very often, a lot of times I start with this darker blue color just to set my uh, my texture, and then that color will be manipulated once I'm actually working on color. <laughs> so I promise this design will most likely not be uh, this blue <laughs> when I when I'm done with it. It's just an easy to see color and it manipulates really well. So that's why I'm using it right now.
I'm also thinking, how am I going to fit this on Instagram? That is a long tail. <laughs> I probably won't be able to. That's okay. Unless I make like a crazy thick borders. Yeah, <laughs> the tail alone is like a slide and a half. Like, <laughs> maybe I can like put it sideways or something. I don't know. Then again, like for some reason on Instagram, like I'm, I've been posting pretty regularly. And like every time I put up a video, I'll uh, post it to a story on Instagram. But I'm like bleeding followers over there. Like at one time I had... I think like 23k and now I'm down to like 19 19k which the numbers don't matter it's just I'm questioning like what am I doing you know that or what am I missing out I don't post a lot of the shorts and I feel like maybe that's why but uh I don't know I really, uh, I really like Instagram too. I think it's, you know, it's a pretty good social media site, but, uh, recent few years it's been a lot harder to, to gain traction, but that could most certainly be up to a uh, user error on my part. <laughs> Also, if you're listening in, um, tomorrow I'll be pulling two commission slots. I know I've had a lot of inquiries for when my commissions are going to be open next. And tomorrow I'll be pulling one slot from our waitlist, which the waitlist is closed because I'm trying to uh, phase it out. And then uh, I'll also be posting one first come first serve commission slot. And uh, I'll be linking that in our Discord server and everything. If uh, that's something you're interested in, it'll be posted onto uh, DeviantArt sometime tomorrow. So, yeah, commissions. That's something I've really uh, been working on this year, is to uh, take on a lot more commission work. Last year I did a lot of project work. Which was okay. I really enjoyed it, but uh, I want a better mix this year, which is what I'm working on. <laughs> See so yeah, if that's something that interests you. Tomorrow might be your lucky day. Oh, what would you commission? Luna. I'm sure it'd be amazing. Anyway. 
with whatever you would decide. <laughs> I'm glad you like it so far, Luna. I'm just having fun with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had asked uh, which commission would you want to get done first, if you don't mind, you know, sharing publicly or in private, that's fine too. <laughs> Gotta love dogs. They're both convenient and frustrating distractions. <laughs> Oh, yes, I love it. Neverland. <laughs> like this won't stop me what is that uh the meme with dw from arthur well this doesn't stop me because i can't read <laughs> 
my dogs the same way. Like, for example, my dog knows she's not all allowed up on the couch or in our um, chairs. And so she never, ever gets in them, ever. Until we leave. And then she knows if she's out of the kennel, which we kennel her like every time we leave now. But it used to be when uh, she wouldn't kennel when we left, she'd just hop up in the chair and like look at us through the window. Like, you can't get me now. And I'm like, this dog, like, she's more manipulative and conniving than you think. <laughs> And she has absolutely no object permanence. Like, uh, we did an intelligence test with her and <laughs> she failed it off the charts. Oh, my poor dog. Um, like if you hide a treat under a tipped over cup, the treat has vanished. It no longer exists. There's nothing to even search for. It's gone. Like she, that's what she thinks. And it's hilarious. <laughs> Yes, they're too smart in some ways, and then they're like, like, why can't you get this, you know, <laughs> in other ways. But, uh, yeah. Gotta love dogs. Ugh, all the fur detail. We're getting somewhere. That's how Moses is. Like he is repeatedly reprimanded for something but continues to do it. Right. Well, it's like Rosie. Every time, every single time I take her out to the bathroom, we have this routine. Like she knows for me to open the door, she has to sit and, you know, respectfully wait for the door to be open. But every day it's a hassle. It's like, no, I'm going to jump on the door and then I'm going to sit. And it's like, why don't you just sit? Like just sit and the door will be open even faster. You know, <laughs> it's just like she has to remind herself, oh, I got to sit for this thing to like open. It's hilarious. Yes, I know the feeling. Yeah, it's like she's got to, you know, it's. It's like she's got to storm the door for it to be open and it's just a process of like teaching her no we don't have to we don't have to storm this door like it's the beaches of Normandy like we can we can wait and be settled before we open this and it's just every day it's a battle like she knows what she has to do she just doesn't want to do it <laughs> or it's like excitement takes over <laughs> comedians for free yes oh okay yeah feel free I'm all about the dogs which the past few years I've been really heavily researching uh, dog breeds because I'm hoping this year to be able to bring home a new hunting dog and I've got it I've got it pretty much narrowed down but uh yeah I love I love researching all the breeds and everything. I think it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, she does. Like she's like, oh my gosh, we have to go outside now. And it's like every day she knows I'm gonna ask her to sit at the door. And you would think, like, after years of doing this, she would like immediately sit to go outside, but no. 
every day. It's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I have to sit. But it, like, takes her, like, 20 seconds to remember that she has to sit. It's like, how do you, how do you go through this dog, like, every day? Every day we have this fight. It's not even a fight, you know, it's just, like, like a mental, like, checkpoint. Like, oh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta sit. Mind you, I love this dog to death. Uh, she's been a part of my life since she's two years old. I adopted her 2015. Yeah, 2015, 2017. I'd have to look, but uh, it's been a hot minute. Like, she's getting pretty old. She's got gray in her face. She came with abuse. But uh, she's come a long, long way. <laughs> yes, the the judging is really cool. I like watching the uh the hunt test too. I think those are really fun. And the confirmation ring stuff, like <laughs> that's pretty cool. I don't know enough about it to uh to really have a, you know, big opinion on it, but I like uh I like the concept of you know, these historical breeds remaining intact and conserved for the future. It's kind of like a living history. My only complaint is uh, where show ring and field have uh, really diverted from one another. Because in my brain, like, if they're built for that purpose, why are there like two different versions of them? <laughs> you know, like they should all just fulfill the same, the same breed purpose. Yeah. I'm watching my own Twitch stream just to make sure it's running okay. And I just got a black screen. I don't know if anybody else did, but I had to uh I had to refresh the page to get it to work. To get the stream to work again. If anybody else is having the same problem. Oh yeah, I get that. And like, like if we're being honest to ourselves, not a lot of people require dogs for their original purpose anymore. And so if we want to conserve that, you want to make a dog that is capable of being in the home, you know, and stuff like that. But, uh, I don't know. Like there's, <laughs> there's a part of me that's like, you know, when you see like the beautiful Cocker Spaniels or the Springer Spaniels in the ring, it's like you compare those with uh, field bred spaniels which have li little to no hair like they'll have some feathering and stuff but uh, they don't have the hair length that they do in the ring and uh, the ring dogs are absolutely beautiful but trying to do field work with a coat like that uh, I don't think it would be worth it like You'd have burrs and sticks and everything else. And it's like, how far have we strained from the original the original uh, breed concepts when we get uh, certain traits being, um, I don't know, like taken to the extreme, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> but I understand there's like a lot of crossover and there's, 
There has to be a... Uh... Oh, what's the word? Starts with a C, but it's like where you meet in the middle. Compromise, compromise. It's 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 a Thursday. It's not my day. <laughs> but uh, there has to be a lot of compromise between, you know, wanting to have pet versions of these dogs that appeal to the average pet owner, which is totally fine and understandable, and then wanting to appeal to uh, the original purpose of the dogs and stuff like that. Thursdays are not Missy approved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah anybody uh anybody really working to try and preserve these breeds in whatever capacity like kudos to you like it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of money if you're doing everything right and you're health testing and you're treating your dogs right then you do you And, you know, if you happen to have a heart for adopting, overbreeding, that's fine too. Lots of ways to, to love dogs on this earth. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that'll say, uh, you know, adopt, don't shop and everything, but I don't know. I'm like, I understand where you're coming from, but, uh, having health tested, uh, reliable breeders, especially for dogs that work and, uh, like dogs that are like service dog prospects and uh, dogs that we rely on like in our military and police and detection services and stuff like that like having a uh, well thought out breeding and having health tested and uh, reliable pairings is kind of a necessity and I don't think it's it's a bad thing or even if you're just wanting a reliable pet like it's okay if you don't want to uh, roll the genetics dice with a uh, adoptable dog which I have multiple times in my life <laughs> and you know lots of adoptable dogs are great but some people just don't wanna don't wanna take that risk and that is okay too yeah I agree gang Yeah. No, my uh my dog, she is half border collie and uh half husky, almost half husky, and like 10% Bernese mountain dog. So she's got like the vocalizations and the nuttiness of a husky. And like the crazy drive and just crazy energy of a border collie. And then like she has <laughs> She has a floating dew claw of the uh, Bernese on her back leg. And it's just like, like you really, you know, you really do. When you adopt, you're, you're kind of rolling the dice on genetics. You don't know what you could get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pit bulls are one of those, like, ah, it's a controversial topic. There can be some really great pit bulls, but if people go into it thinking, you know, putting flower crowns on dogs are just going to solve the problem of, like, realizing how big of a role their genetics and their history play into what they are, 
Like, you're kind of setting yourself up for, for failure, in my opinion. Like, if they're managed correctly and people come into it knowing their background and knowing their breed and uh, managing all of that respectfully, I think they can be, you know, fine. But if people just willy-nilly adopt and think, oh, this is my, this is my baby, like, <laughs> and just ignore breed history, you know, the genetics that they were bred for, and, uh, you know, what's, what's in their background, like, you're setting yourself up for failure. But that's just my, that's my soapbox on dogs. I could talk about it all day. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you hear it all the time. It's like, oh, well, he would never hurt a fly. And then somebody, you know ends up sadly bitten or attacked or whatever and then it's like oh I didn't I didn't know he could do it he didn't have it in him and I'm sure there were warning signs and I'm sure there were better ways to to approach the issue but stuff like that sadly happens nowadays Yeah, I'm just, I'm an advocate of like, if you're going to get into animals, research your animal, research your breed, research their history, <coughs> really get to know them. So that you can do the best you can with them. Right. The more research you can do, the better. Yep. Yeah, I, I saw a really unfortunate story a couple weeks ago of a... Uh, it was either a little boy or a little girl who got killed by her family dog. That was a, a pit bull mix. And, uh, you know, you just... You can't ignore genetics. You can't ignore what those animals are capable of. But like I said, that's that's my soapbox <laughs> on animals. I uh I could talk about it all day. But yeah, researching will only ever help you. The more research you can do the better. Yes, that's a good idea, Yang, going to somebody that can prove their testing and their behaviors and their background and give you a more reliable step is, uh, is so much better for you and the dog. Like going forward, like after having a having Rosie, like I love her to death and we've learned a lot from each other, but going forward, I don't think I would ever have, uh, that mix again because it's just been, it's been an uphill battle. <laughs> and, uh, with my hunting dog, I'm planning on going through a breeder who's actually a, a friend. So that'll be nice. Now, I was going to look up. We need some nice background for this. Let's see what we can find. One of my older backgrounds. Yeah. Sometimes what I do is I'll take an older background like this and uh, just slap it on there just to give a little variance 
instead of a solid color. I think in this case this one works pretty well. But we'll see when we get done here. I'm going to blur out this bird. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, Yang, I am like the same way with my husky mix. Like I think huskies are beautiful. I think they're they can be amazing, you know, awesome land race dogs, that kind of stuff, but man, I don't think I ever want one again just because of their um personality, their independence. Like they're awesome dogs, but <laughs> going forward, I don't think I want another one. Oh, I'm really hard, sorry to hear that, Luna, about your uh, your husband's lab. When they fall on your kids, I mean, that, that's really, that's sad. I'm sorry. Now here comes the fun part. See what colors we can achieve here. I get creamy. Yeah, like they look awesome, but not for me. <laughs> like Rosie's only half and that's enough for me. I was also maybe thinking, I don't know how this would look. But what if we had it like descending into a story, like descending into like, I don't know, I gotta like figure this out. <laughs> this is my thought process when I make designs, by the way, I'm just like, let's try it and see. Like I have a, I have a concept. Just don't know if I can execute it. <laughs> it won't be an actual book, but I was thinking like, like when you say once upon a time, like your mind enters like the space in your head type thing. So I was thinking like it goes from like the mother goose, pretty beige down feathers to like into the concept of a story in the tale, something like that. Very loose concept, but <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Like the color is supposed to like represent falling into the story. Yeah. Like I said, very loose concept, not well thought out, but <laughs> let's see what happens. Ooh, okay, let's see. My falcon is uh taking a bath, so if you hear if you hear water splashing or weird noises, he's just over there hopping around in his bird bath. 
and uh, that's, that's what you're hearing. Hmm. I don't know, I might keep it white. I don't know yet. Hmm. Yes, just like that. You like the blue? I like the blue too, but I feel like I have so many blue blue tailed characters. Ah, I don't know. What shall I do? Maybe we can work on the paper and then come back. So I'd imagine the paper on the tail is a nice parchmenty color. Just like that. Maybe there's some tea colored stains and the edging is a little darker. Something like this. Mm hmm. Yes. A leather binding of an old book. I like that idea. I'm going to have to try that. Coffee and tea stains. Yes. I always told Solo if we would ever become uh, rich, I would love to have, I would just love to have a library like filled with old books. Or like, what do they call it? A study, like a proper study. I think that'd be so cool. Maybe someday. <laughs> Yes. Like the thought of like a deep leather chair and you can just sit there and like read. Ugh. Love it. Oh, soul sister. Once upon a time, dot, dot, dot. It's taking a vigorous bath. So for anybody listening in, I'm a uh, I'm a licensed falconer, so I have a a falcon sitting in my office right now taking a bath. 
His name is Richter. He's a very good bird, but uh, he likes to get water everywhere when he takes a bath. I think I like that. That color. Ah, it's hard to decide. I don't know why when I uh, when I focus, I breathe a lot harder. Like when I'm really focused on art, I'm like <sighs> It's just I don't know. I could probably also turn down the sensitivity of my mic. Let me see. Oh. He sticks it out of the one corner of his mouth. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh, that's cute.
Now when I think uh, old mother goose, I think of like golden egg. So I'm thinking, what if we made golden quills? I think that could be pretty cool. Maybe a little glint to the eye that's also golden. Yeah, I think they're going to be neat. Let's see. I quite like that. I like the gold. I think I'm going to stick with that. Yes, that's a good idea. The gold leafing to the papers. They used to spend so much time on the beauty of books.
we go. I think we're getting a little somewhere. Oh, you're fine. Those are some good ideas. I don't know if I could fit much on a charm bracelet, but a necklace might work. Or I was thinking like off the quills, having different quote unquote charms coming off the quills. But we can play around with it and see. All right, but for now, I will be right back in just a couple minutes. So take care for just a, a minute or two.
Okay, I am back. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your ideas, Luna. I just had another one that I kind of want to try. And we'll see. <laughs> like it hit me just as uh, I was letting the dog out. Don't you love it when that happens? It's just like, oh, yes, idea. Thank you. So I was thinking, instead of like charms, um, with the tail, I was thinking about making like, uh, like fog or mist or like the clouds and like in between the clouds, you'll catch like hints of fairy tales and stories. <laughs> it's just an ideas. No, I love ideas. I love when people bring them to me. I, you know, I just can't implement them all. <laughs> I wish I could, but I always appreciate good ideas. I'm thinking maybe I'll try this little mist idea. Thank you. Because it is really hard to uh, balance like a simple lighter color design and like when you start adding uh, like colored elements it's to me anyway it's hard to like keep everything looking the way you want it to <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but uh, this is this is a welcome challenge we can do it We can do it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I need to do more with gold. I really enjoy the gold. And nothing wrong with misty cloud babes. Let's see what we can get here. Like. Like I was thinking we can include a red-headed figure for um, Little Red Riding Hood. We could like maybe include a part of a bear or a bear paw or something of the sort for uh, three Goldilocks. Uh, what is it called? I guess it's just called Goldilocks. <laughs> And Snow White, we can include like an apple or an evil witch or silhouette or something like that. There's lots of ideas. Normal stilt skin, yes. We can just include like hints of uh, old stories of once upon a times, that kind of stuff.
Glass Slipper. Yes, we ought to do that one. And Sleeping Beauty. Just little hints of stories. I also feel like uh, royal purple and uh, indigo along with gold kind of gives like that royal like princess castle feel so maybe we can bring in a little bit of those colors Cat and the Fiddle, yes, Pinocchio, Rapunzel. I don't know if I'll be able to fit all these in, but we can try to get some of them. I think that'll be a good goal. <laughs> Kind of like this brighter color in the tail. I think that's neat. Let's add we'll get a little glass slipper. I've never drawn a glass slipper, so we'll see how well this goes. Just from memory. <laughs> I also wouldn't call this a slipper. I'd call this like a heel. <laughs> but. Yeah, 
Maybe we can make it a little transparent. And then add some of our highlight. There we go. Glass sliver. Maybe we'll have this cloud coming through it just a little bit. Oh, thank you, Lakina and Mint Poppy.